marginal upgrade to Diogo Dallo or a misunderstood Chelsea reject that could supplant Luke Shaw. Just how good is Mark Cucurella? Very, very quickly got at Chelsea and he's exploited it better than anyone. Surprisingly for a man who's been criticised for his lack of physicality and power, Cucurella is pretty combative in aerial situations, boasting a 50% plus aerial success rate. However, before we sing his praises too much, he isn't as strong in the air as a Luke Shaw. I can't envisage him being slotted in, say, a centre-back role like the way Shaw occurred for Martinez. He gets bodied way too often for that to be a viable tactic, but when he does get his run and his jump going, he gets off the ground pretty well, and he's quite plucky for his size. Overall, I say the stats look inflated based on the eye test. He is prone to getting beaten to goal kicks, and he does allow flick-ons to be one against him when the bigger player comes across to his flank but against the average winger he's likely to dominate the aerial duel and he's pretty handy on the far post too overall not a major strength but not a liability either up. Oh, lovely touch from him one of Cucurella's major shortcomings has been his dribbling now whilst he's a neat and tidy ball carrier doesn't make many errors with the ball he doesn't have that power in his stride to eat up the yards and burst past opposing players down the flank, like a Hakimi, Nuno Mendes, Alfonso Davis. Even when he's got the space to run into, it's almost as if his technique doesn't really allow him to power into space. Someone like Davis has a looser dribble, but it's more suited to knocking the ball into space and chasing after it. Cuckoo tends to want to keep the ball close to him and feels uncomfortable just punting it and chasing after it. He usually gets caught up. So that's why he doesn't really progress the game that often and most of his explosive bursts are usually when he's being pressed in his own third and he can use the momentum of the aggressor and turn it against them by skipping past them versus beating them in a pure head-to-head or shoulder-to-shoulder battle. Now, we touched upon Cucurella's terrier-like approach in the last section and that can be Useful, he's diligent in cutting across and covering for a centre-back or going into midfield and catching an attacking midfielder unaware or even following his inverted winger inside and not giving them any breathing space. In the negative sense, he can be too aggressive in leaving his position and then he's on the back foot when a pass is played in behind him and that can lead to panic in terms of the recovery and at times he's simply too far away from the action to get back in time. So that leads to vulnerabilities in the back line and as we've seen with Chelsea, directly leads to goals and with Cucurella's attacking game not really being effective enough to make up for these defensive shortcomings it can leave behind the impression that he can't be really trusted to do anything which is a very harsh depiction of his abilities. In terms of his ball winning Cucurella is a very proactive defender he's very agile blessed with tremendous reserves of energy and he's tenacious so you can see why he's able to produce Kante like numbers from left back. In terms of his 1v1 defending, Cucurella is very underappreciated. He's given the likes of Salah and Saka tough games. He's got the quick feet and the hips to be able to keep up with their twists and turns and has the low centre of gravity to handle their strength in shoulder to shoulder situations. If there is a slight weakness in his 1v1 defending, it's that he gives almost too much room to wingers who are looking to cross the ball. He's more in his element when they're trying to beat him in a direct battle. The other issue is that Cucurella has no chill and what I mean by that is his defensive style is so intense that he can at times be caught out by going all in and then if he does get beaten he's left for dead and this can lead to the perception that he's a liability. Unfortunately as a defender especially for these big teams even if you get 9 out of 10 decisions right if the 1 out of 10 is a really poor error of judgement which leads to a goal then you're going to lose the trust of managers and fans alike and that's something Cucurella needs to eradicate from his game. Again. That's a good ball. Cucurella can really help his side dominate possession due to his comfort in link-up play and his willingness to come inside or even stay outside but generally join in with the midfield play. He's most effective in that middle third, albeit near the touchline where he can provide pause and act as a station point for the team to play out wide to. He almost helps the team to rest in possession and recycle the ball. He's not someone who's going to drive forward from that position but he does make decent passes, quite progressive passes back into the midfield and at times into the feet of the forward and it allows his side to suffocate the opposition. The only criticism I have and we'll see this from the creativity section 
is that he's not really actively hurting the opposition the more he sees the ball. Kukureya. Another rather disappointing aspect of Kukurela's game has been his creativity. Compared to another inverted fullback in Zinchenko, you can see that his creative stats are pretty poor. He doesn't tend to get forward often enough to be a proper central creative force and he doesn't hit enough progressive passes or through balls to make the most of the possession he does accumulate by being in a central position. Thus it feels like he's pretty pointless in possession and with Chelsea being renowned for being heavily reliant on Chilwa and Reese James for thrust and creativity from the wider areas, you can see why Cucurella would have struggled to establish himself as an indispensable asset for Chelsea. Kovacic to Kukurea. Oh, dangerous ball. Crossing does not form a strong part of Cucurella's game, which explains why he's recently been perceived as more of an inverted fullback. He puts in the least amount of crosses and the least accurate crosses of the fullbacks that we compared him to and one of the issues is that he doesn't really generate much space in which to cross once he gets to the byline hence his crosses seem hurried or they get blocked he really hasn't got those long legs which are really going to eat up that space get past his man and he can have a nice window in which to get that ball in another issue is that his picture of what's going on inside the box is not elite which leads to a lack of clarity as to what weight he needs to put on the delivery and where he needs to put it it all feels haphazard hit and hope. He has at times, you know, produced some decent cutbacks and some whip deliveries, but it feels inconsistent and generally I'd say he's an unreliable source of delivery. In terms of his shooting, statistically we can see that Kukurele is a non-existent goal threat. His shots are generally feeble, they lack disguise, they get blocked often and he's got an annoying tendency of trying to use his weaker foot to no avail either. There's no real technique that we can say that he's mastered or he's got in the locker. Finesse, Lace, Traveller, none of them seem under his control and there's an element of panic and hit and hope when he finds himself in the final third. He does get himself into decent positions but in truth, this attribute alone renders his ability to be a top-class wing-back impossible. Interception by Wesley Fofana. Did so well to get the ball clear. With regards to his long passing, Cucurella has a tendency to hoof the ball often under defensive pressure and that explains why he hits such a large volume of long passes. In his defence, when he does try to hoof it, he does hit areas and he does so with a fair amount of curl but that's a tactic that you associate with lower league football where a curled long pass into the channel can cause nightmares for slow fullbacks and aggressive centre-backs who have to deal with an aggressive attacker handing them down whilst they're trying to deal with a ball that's ferociously spun off the surface. You can imagine someone like Antonio from West Ham thriving with these type of passes. But the issue we have is that at the highest level, these type of passes are seen as too risky and highly likely to lead to transfers in possession. In terms of his switches of play, Cucurella has a pretty decent switch of play and he can open up the other flank when he goes for the diag. I'd say his best long pass is the lofted pass down the line for his wing back or his winger to run on to, he hits them with a fair amount of backspin which allows it to slow down in time for his teammate to run on to. Overall, an area of his game that needs to be tightened up, too wasteful with his long passes and needs to play out his way along the floor a lot more. Tactically, Cucurella was used as a wing-back and a side centre-back at Brighton and the truth is at that smaller club, his lack of elite attacking output or even defensive output was overlooked. He wasn't generating a large amount of goals and assists under Potter. And then when he followed Potter to Chelsea, he was predominantly featured as a left centre-back and struggled to match the standard set by Rudiger. He lacked the power and the acute positional sense that's needed for an elite level side centre-back. Similarly, his lack of attacking output meant that when Chilwell was injured, he was unable to match the Englishman's attacking output, which meant that the wing-back system wasn't viable and then when a back four was used, Thiago Silva's lack of express pace meant that Cucurella's rather aggressive style of defending wasn't covered adequately down that side. So Chelsea were then left with two full backs who both struggled defensively in a back four. For United, he'll once again be used as a left back in a back four. And that's probably still his best shot at surviving in an elite environment. But is Lissandro Martinez quick and powerful enough to cover in behind Cucurella if he wanders forward? chasing the ball? 
I don't think so. So therefore, Cucurella will need to adapt his positional game and focus on being more of an astute defender who comes into his own in 1v1 duels rather than focus on his attacking game, which in my opinion is more style than substance. In conclusion, Chelsea overpaid for Cucurella. He didn't have the power to penetrate the final third and he lacked the creativity and the goal threat to match the attacking output of a Ben Chilwell. Now, whilst he was statistically a better defender than Chilwell, his positional lapses and his tendency to hoof the ball meant he wasn't seen as a reliable defensive figure either. So this perception of a jack of no trades, master of none, led to his downfall at Chelsea. Now, in truth, that's a very harsh depiction of Cucurella, who does work very hard, he can get stuck in, and he's even capable of marking some of the toughest wingers in the Premier League. And generally, he is quite tidy in possession. But ultimately, he's got too many holes in his game to be a world-class fullback, and he was brought for a huge fee. Hence, he was judged accordingly. Now, as a rotation option for United, he's a definite upgrade to a Malassia, and defensively, he's better 1v1 than a Dallo. Will he be an upgrade to Luke Shaw? No. Will he bring new attacking verve to United's fullback play? No. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and see you guys again next time. Bye.